Hey guys, that's her. So today I'm gonna be doing a different video compared to my normal videos. For today, I'm gonna be going over the new technical update and balance update 2.2.2. This is a preparation for the new update coming soon, which include clan battles, playing with friends, a bunch of stuff. If you guys do want to see all the leaks that they have done, it is all on their Facebook. I definitely recommend you guys do check it out. They did say what time it was gonna happen. And that it was a technical update. They have a lot of leaks here, such as uh, clan battles. And you guys could see the new map. I'm going to just show you guys a quick clip of it. Here you guys can see there's a 360 view of it. It's pretty insane. I can't believe they were able to do this. And you guys can get an early look at the map. Looks really exciting. I believe it's going to be a control points map. There you can see. Yeah, there, as you, there you can see the point. They have a lot of more leaks. They have a lot of information. They have a lot of tips for you. Let's like protect your account. Time for recruiting, you can look for a clan. There's also another leak here, custom lobby. And there's also a Facebook Guns of Boom group. You guys should definitely join that. It's very good for tips, just for talking, just chilling, as well as the Guns of Boom Discord. So now I'm going to get into the notes. So update 2.2.2 notes. I have ran over this. There's a lot of changes here, so I'm going to try to go for everything for you guys. So first, we're going to start off with the Assault Rifle. By the way, this update is already live. You guys do have to update your game to be able to play the game. So before we started, damage per hit is not the one and only stat that defines a power level of a particular weapon. It's also less popular, but equally important stats like fire rate, recoil, the gun spread, and how it changes over time. As you guys can see, if you guys do read a little bit further, they are going to be more accurate and comfortable to play with. So if you guys don't know, I use the Destroyer. I feel a huge difference in gameplay. I believe right now with the price, if you compare the price of the Juggernaut and the Destroyer, the Destroyer is probably the better gun value-wise, but if you guys do have the gold, I'd still go for Juggernaut. But the main problem with me and the Destroyer and why I've been using the Pain more is because of the accuracy. You're unable to strafe with it, and it does make it a lot more difficult. But now with this update, I have used it, guys. It's really, really big difference. It's definitely noticeable. The other weapons there, you guys can also tell. Mamba, that's pretty huge. Mamba's a very good, very good Gunbucks Assault Rifle. You guys, for me, at least me personally, I believe that's the best Gunbucks Assault Rifle. And also because of this, the Destroyer, I will make an updated free-to-play player guide. Due to this, I do not recommend you guys buy the Ranger. I further down that you guys will see that they nerfed it. And since they buffed the Destroyer and they still haven't done anything in the Porcupine, I recommend you guys save in this order. You guys go for Destroyer. And after you go for Porcupine instead of going for Ranger and then Juggernaut, I believe the Destroyer, the difference between the Destroyer and Juggernaut isn't worth between the difference and the Ranger and the Porcupine. The Porcupine is very clearly the better weapon now. So another buff is now the Slicer. Minimal damage increased by 125%, which is huge. That's oh, more than double. And the Mamba Max Distance, another buff, increased by 23%. That's one-fourth of more than I already had. A nerf right here, the Sting. It's a very starter weapon. It was really annoying. It wasn't really used too much above level 34. But on the lower levels, it was a very good weapon. Thankfully, it has been decreased. Their burning effect decreased from 5 to 2.5 seconds, which is huge. This means a two times decrease of the overall damage. The minimal shooting distance is decreased by 8%, and headshot multiplier is decreased from 1.6 to 1.3. I do not recommend you guys start using this thing. You guys really need to look for different assault rifles. I'd recommend the Mamba. Maybe if someone tries the the Slicer, please let me know, because that 125% damage increase is pretty huge. Now we're going to sniper rifles, and let's see. So the first buff is going to be the Veteran. It's a starter sniper rifle, I believe. No one really uses it at the moment. Minimal shooting and distance decreased by 25%. Uh, Undertaker, the rifle doesn't pause before firing. The rifle doesn't fire in burst anymore. Instead, the firing was increased by 10%. I'm not sure if that's good because I don't really use any of these snipers except for the Thanatos. And we'll see if it has any buff or not. The Quicksilver, the minimal distance required to make a shot was reduced by 25%. That's pretty good. If you guys don't know, Quicksilver is a gold sniper. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it costs like 900 gold. It's probably not worth buying since you can buy the Thanatos. But if anyone does have it and does try it out, please let me know. I'd love to see any type of review on that weapon. I want to see how good it's good or not. Uh, fire rate reduced by 70, 17%, but the max damage increased by 122%, and the minimum damage increased by 33%. That is huge. If you guys are getting able to get headshots with that weapon, if anyone does have it, please let me know. I'd love to see how it works. Iceberg, the slowing effect works for 3 seconds instead of 2, but the slowing effect is weaker. Meaning, like, when you slow someone down, when you shoot them, they'll just won't, they'll walk faster than they normally would. But it has, it has an extra second. I'm not sure how that'll work out. I know that Iceberg is a good sniper because of its ability. If you guys do try it, just let me know what you guys think in the comments. The Prometheus. 
Headshot multiplier increase from 1 to 1.2. That's a pretty big increase, especially with Darkstalker. Personally, I'm not a fan of the sniper because of the fire ability, but if anyone does have it, be sure to let me know how much damage it does. Liquidator, first shot damage increased by 8%, which is about 100 damage extra. Jam of the Explosion increased by 8%, which is an extra 100 damage. You guys can add about an extra 200 damage total. It normally does around 2,500, including the Explosion. So it's a decent increase, but personally for me, I don't think it's enough to pass the Thanatos, especially price-wise. I still believe that's the number one sniper. And Headshot Multiplier increased from 1.2. That it only does about 1440 headshot damage. I don't know the math on top of my head. Might be around two, three hundred, but mm, I'm not sure if that does also count for the explosion. But it's pretty decent. I still recommend the Thanatos, but if you guys do want to use a liquidator, you guys aren't as good at sniping. It's definitely good. Manticore perk change deals 25 more damage every five seconds before it dealt 200 damage over every 10 seconds the player was not in battle. Charging time is decreased by 10%. Minimal shooting distance is decreased by 37%. Let me know if you guys use do use the mana core. Let me know how it works. And Punisher, some nerfs. The, uh, the ammo capacity was decreased from 12 to 24 to 10 out of 20. And the Falcon, this is a very, very big one. Headshot multiplier decreased from times 3 to times 2. That is huge. I believe the Falcon headshot was about 3,500 damage. You guys can see that by... That'll go down by like a thousand damage, which is insane. But at least the damage from shot was increased by ten percent. Personally, now I don't think the Falcon is worth it because you can't get two shot headshots. Personally, if you guys have a good shotgun, I'd say just go with the Scout, maybe the Iceberg. But if you guys are lower level, the Falcon is still a good sniper. It should do around twenty-five to three thousand damage. Not the best at math in my head. I'm just doing this, I'm just doing this from the top of my head. Uh, shotgun gameplay changes out of all the secondary stats recoil is the most easily spotted on shotguns with this update we decreased it for some of them making the gameplay more comfortable all the shotguns with decreased recoil are cerebrus and battering ram i believe these are the only two with recoil but if the cerebrus i know a lot of people did make the mistake of buying it you guys should def definitely let me know how it works i believe it does four round burst at a thousand damage each which is actually pretty solid so battering ram is also a good one does a thousand seven hundred damage let me know how you guys feel about that one Shotgun buffs, Tempest, slightly higher fire rate. I don't believe that'll do anything for the meta. It's really just not a useful shotgun. Shotgun nerf, this is where it gets really bad, especially for the free-to-play players. The shotgun is a weapon that is at best in close combat. Unfortunately, because of the small size of the maps, close combat is currently a very broad term. That's why we decided to change the shotgun's fire rate, range, and capacity. They probably did this since it's a 4v4, but the maps are just so tiny. Shotguns are much more used than assault rifles and machine guns. That's why they did buff more assault rifles, and they did nerf the shotguns that are used the most. Batting ram fire rate decreased by 17%. One of the reasons, well, does it really use that much, but it is a pretty big difference. Brawler, fire rate decreased by 11%. Brawler did have a very, a really pretty slow fire rate already. And now the 11% decrease is not good. Ammo to capacity decreased from 12 out of 24 to 10 out of 20. I believe that was a, one of the shotguns with the most ammo. Now, Trader. This was the best free-to-play gunbuck shotgun in the game. I'm not sure how it is gonna, how it's going to be now. I haven't tried it out or any of the other ones. If I do find one that I clearly see, I will let you guys know in my new updated free-to-play guide. I'll probably release it this weekend. So for this update, they decreased the general distance by 9%. They decreased the fire by 12.5%, which was already slow. And the ammo capacity decreased from 11 to 22 to 9 to 18 Honestly, you guys should look for the shotguns that weren't nerfed. If you guys know any good Gumba shotguns, please sure to let me know. I'd love to try them out. I don't think the trade will be the best anymore, but we'll have to see since a lot of them did get nerfed. Remedy, general distance decreased by 9%. That's not very good. And fire rate decreased by 17%. The Remedy already had one of the slowest fire rates in the game. It's basically just not very useful at the moment in the new meta. Ranger, this is the biggest one, especially for free-to-play players. I know a lot of free-to-play players. We're saving up for this. Personally, I was going to do the same thing on my free-to-play account. Thankfully, I have not saved up 900 gold. But here you guys can see the general distance decreased by 10%. Fire rate decreased by 17%. And the ammo capacity decreased from 9 out of 18 to 8 out of 16. I Honestly, this is the reason why I say the Destroyer and then the Porcupine. The Ranger is just not the same anymore. It's probably not worth the gold. You're much better off with the Destroyer. The Porcupine is still easily going to be the best weapon now. Now machine gun, we've upgraded the machine guns in the same way that we upgraded the assault rifles. We made the gameplay more comfortable and accuracy higher by increasing the speed of the crosshair dynamic. So first one, four do not. Most of these uh machine guns, I don't really know their abilities, but if you guys do use them, you guys will just know if it's good or not. If any of them are really good, please sure to let me know. I'd love to see. 
Fortuna, damage per shot increased by 7%. Perks, chance of activating increased from 9 to 11%. Persuader, headshot multipliers decreased from 2 times to 1.3 times. That's a very big difference. Damage per shot is increased by 30%. That's good. That's very, very good. And crosshair dynamic speed increased by 10%. I believe what that is by there is when you move the, when the crosshair opens up and closes down, it's basically the accuracy, it'll do that faster. Anubis, damage per shot increased by 6%. Spread while moving decreased. And crosshair dynamic added. That's actually pretty good. And now when you do move, like when you're strafing, the spread of the bullets won't be as much. I'm not sure if anyone does use the Anubis, but if you guys didn't know what that meant, there you go. Hydra, spread while moving decreased. Starting fire rate increased by 60%. That's very good. Reaching max fire rate in 2.5 seconds instead of 4. That's also a very big difference. And crosshair dynamic decreased by 2 times. That's not very good. Now, this is probably the biggest one so far. The Hurricane. Now, they can see that they say that the Hurricane is very, very good. It was one of the best free-to-play weapons in the game. It, honestly, it probably did get it did deserve to get nerfed, but it really does suck for free-to-play players. I was hoping, even though I don't have it, that it doesn't get nerfed. It did give a very big chance for the free-to-play players, and I do have it on my second account. That will, will make my life a lot harder. But as we can see, perk change restores 40, 50, 60, 85, 96 to 115 HP for shot. That's per level. Instead of 3%, 3.6%, 4.3%, 5.2%, 6.4%, and 7.8% of max HP per shot. I'm not 100% sure of how much the percents calculate to, but it probably does probably is a big difference. And damage per shot decreased by 16%. Pain ammo capacity decreased from 75 to 60. Yeah, pain did have definitely a huge ammo capacity. And Bug Fist used to make mistakes during calculation of bonus damage. Now deals 15 to 20% less. Before, the pain did about 624 damage. And now it does. I'm not sure how much it does. You guys would have to calculate it. You guys will probably see me see it in, another, in a video in the future. And I'll go over some of the comments. Most of the comments here, which I do agree to. Most of these are about free-to-play players getting screwed over. Personally, I believe they are going in a good direction. Making the game more competitive. Improving the more competitive guns. But now with the free-to-play, it'll just be a lot worse. It does make it more difficult on the free-to-play players. Hopefully, maybe in the future updates, they do pick it up a little bit, make it better for the free-to-play players. Maybe drop another sale. But as you guys can see, not there's not a lot of fans of this. I do want to show you guys that people don't agree with this. And I personally, I wish there could have been better updates, but I guess it does happen. As you guys see, more and more people. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, or this video, I mean... I will do this for the next update that will come out. There will be like the clan battle update with custom lobbies, with chat. I will make another video, guys, about that. Inform you guys about everything. I'm sorry this video was so long, but everyone who did stay along, and if you guys did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for all the support, and I'll see you.